Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Tristan Parker here and in today's video, I'm gonna be showing you step-by-step -step how I personally prep my client websites ready for handover. Now, I've had a couple of questions asking me how I go about doing this, so I thought what better way to explain it than to put together a video. So I do have here a real life client website that I need to prep for launch next week and I'm gonna run you through my process step by step. So one thing I've seen within the industry is a lot of designers hand over a website to a client without it being prepared in the right way and it doesn't include a lot of things that I'm gonna to cover today. Now because of this, what ends up happening is the designer will send over the website as it is and the client has full access to it and they end up breaking something which means it's going to cost you more work later down the line so the best thing to do is run through the steps that i'm going to show you today you're going to end up with a very nice easy to use website for the client and you're not going to cause yourselves any headaches in the, in the future so what we're going to be doing in this video guys is branding the wordpress environment just slightly just so it's unique to the company that we are supplying the website for and we're also going to be looking to simplify the wordpress experience because if you're new to WordPress and you log into it, it is a complete minefield and we don't want that for our clients. And of course, we're also going to be making sure that the user has the right role permissions and access to the right things because we don't want them to have access to things that are going to cause breaks within the site. Trust me, I've had that happen countless times in the past before I started using this process. So hopefully, if you implement this process like I am going to show you today, you're not going to have those problems later down the line and you're going to have a much better relationship with your clients and a much easier time in your agency. So first up, we are gonna go through some housekeeping just to make sure that you've got these things installed on your website before you hand it over. So first of all, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that there is security installed on the website. So here over on the left hand side, you can see that we have WordFence installed, which is our security plugin. So that's gonna make sure that bots and things can't just log into the site and start hacking things around and then you end up with security breaches. So WordPress is prone to hacking, so make sure there is some form of security on there. I recommend WordFence, I think it's a great plugin. Secondly, we wanna make sure that our website title is correct. So up here it says get plastered. So this is the client that we're working with. Make sure it doesn't say anything like new blog or new website or anything random. So the way that you can edit this is by going to appearance and then customize. Now this might change depending on what theme you're using. We're using Hello Elemental. So if we head to site identity, you can see here site title is get plastered and we have a tagline is hit. And we have a tagline as well, which is great for SEO. Now finally in this step, we just wanna make sure that we've got a site icon, otherwise known as a fav icon installed. So you can see that we've got this here. So there'll be an option to, if I remove that, you can just select the site icon here. Click it, click select. There we go, got it, it's installed and it'll be at the top of your browser next to your website title. Once you're done here, let's just hit publish. So next up, we're gonna be slightly customizing this. And here I have an example of my website where you can see that my logo is displayed nicely at the top. It doesn't have that default WordPress logo that comes as standard. This is a really nice touch for when the user logs in because it's bespoke and it's tailored directly towards their business. So guys, in order to achieve this, we're gonna to need to install a new plugin. So we're gonna to head to plugins now click add new and we're going to look for a plugin called the custom admin interface so guys I used to do this with another plugin which essentially allowed me to add logos and branding to the WordPress admin but then I needed a separate plugin that would allow me to then customize the admin menu which we'll go to later but luckily this plugin allows me to do both which is almost like two for the price of one I don't need two plugins, I can achieve both things with one plugin. So this is why I now use this one. We're gonna install that now. Great, once it's activated, you're gonna see this custom admin interface option down the bottom. Let's just click it or head to general settings. So from here, you can change the default background color of the login screen if you wish, but today I'm just gonna be adding a logo. So click upload image, select your logo, insert it, and then click save. So if we just open this up in a new window, you can see now that we have this nice logo here, the default WordPress logo is gone. So real nice and easy. Now next up, the important part is adding a user login for our customer. So we're gonna head to users now. What you wanna do is run through the details here. Now the important thing is, is that we go to roles and we change them to editor. So editor is one level below admin. We don't wanna give them full admin access because that's when problems can happen. But by all means, if they specifically want admin access, then obviously give it to them. But I would also do that with a caveat and say, please don't fiddle around with anything that you're not sure of. 
because if you break it, then they're gonna have, you're going to have to charge them in order to fix it. So give them editor access. Now run for the details like I've just quickly done here. Make sure editor access is selected and then just hit add new user. Now that our user is added, the next thing we wanna do is limit the amount that they can change within the website. So if we head over to Elementor, we're gonna go down to our role manager. Now from here, you'll see the variety of roles that are available when you add a user. We've just added an editor. So what we're gonna do is we are gonna limit the access to only be able to edit the content. This means that they're not gonna be able to play around with the style, the design, the layout of the site and, and cause any breaks that way. So I've just logged into the new user that we've created that has editor access. And you can see that their admin bar is slightly different to the one of admin. You can see that already some of the things are limited. So once you apply those role permissions and you log in as the editor, you'll see that we don't have the access to change the layout or the style of any of the website. We can simply go in and edit the content. So we only have this content option available to us, which is awesome because that means that the user can't go in and fiddle around with things and make it look absolutely terrible. So while the customer is also logged in, you'll see that they have access to less options in the admin menu. Now the thing is that's great because they can't go and fiddle with things that they shouldn't be playing with. But there are a couple of things on here that you might still want to remove, so I'm gonna show you how to do that now. So the plugin that we already have installed, the custom admin interface, we're gonna head back to here, but this time we're gonna go down to admin menu. So you can see that this replicates our menu here on the left hand side as an admin. So what you wanna do is check out the menu as an editor. There are a couple of things in there that you might still want to remove and not allow them to have access to. So things like tools doesn't seem like there's any point in it being there. You might wanna remove the templates to allow them to not edit the header and the footer. Uh, things like comments, uh, links, you, you might wanna move that as well. And then what that's gonna do is just gonna give them a really nice, easy experience when they log in. So now we need to go through this list and remove anything that we don't want the uh, uh, editor to have access to. So we might wanna remove comments. We definitely wanna remove templates. We don't want Elemental showing either. Keep only the profile. We don't need them to have tools. Don't need them to have settings. Turn off SEO, turn off WordFence, turn off Insights, turn off that one as well. So just to double check that, they can edit the menu, they can edit the customize. We don't want them to have access to themes or the theme editor. So it's gonna keep that really, really simple. So they can add pages, they can add media, they can add posts, and they obviously have the dashboard. So let's scroll down. Now the important thing here is that you implement this for nobody except, and then you can choose the role editor. Now what's great here is you can also choose individual users. So if you wanted to be really specific with what users can and can't uh, have access to, you can do that here. Now personally, I don't know why they word it like this. It's very strange rather than just having like a tick box of saying, who you want this to apply to. You kind of have to go along with the condition. But nonetheless, the plugin is great, so I do continue to use it. Now, when we go back to our client side, you can see how simple this menu is now. They have access to their posts, the media, and the pages. They can click edit with Elementor and only have access to edit the content, which is ideal. Now, one final thing before you hand the site over is making sure that there are no plugins that need updating and WordPress is also up to date. It's not very good handing over a website that already has out of date plugins and already has a version of WordPress which is out of date because that does create opportunity for people to hack the site which isn't really getting off on the right foot. So make sure that the plugin and WordPress is up to date as well. And once everything is finished and the website is good to go, the last thing that I do is record my screen and talk the user through step by step how to use their brand new website. Now I do this with a tool called Loom that is a free version or you can use a paid version. I personally use the paid one because it's only $10 per month and it gives you access to full HD screen recording. And if you are using this a lot, it's well worth the money. So what I do is I record my screen and talk the user through step by step how they can go about uh, amending their profile, how to add pages, how they can change the content on the pages. And remember 
This is gonna be really easy for them to understand because they can follow the video through step by step. And remember, because they have a stripped down version of the admin toolbar, they're not super overwhelmed with everything that comes with WordPress as standard. So it's really easy for them to follow. And by doing this, it gives them a much nicer experience towards the end of your website working relationship. It makes it a lot more personal as well, and it gives them something that they can just always refer back to. Also, it saves you a lot of time I mean, previously I would have to write guides on how to um, how to do things step by step, taking screenshots and things like that, and it took hours. This takes me 20 minutes max to just quickly blast through, record my screen, talk like I am now, and share them share with them how they go about using their brand new site, and they absolutely love it. So that's my final tip. There is use Loom to create screen recordings before you hand over the website. So now you know how I personally, within my business, prep a website ready to hand over to the client. And hopefully you've uh, been able to pick up a few things to start implementing into your process or take everything and just give your client a much better experience when you are handing over websites to them. Now, if you haven't done so already, I'd recommend that you hit the subscribe button and the bell notification to be notified of future releases. There are tons of videos on this channel which are designed to help you up your website design game and improve your business. So go and check those out. So that's it for now guys and I will see you in the next video.